it's Bob Lazar. Listen, I have something to ask you. Something's really come up that's important. Um, if you would text me and let me know when is a good time to call you. I don't want you to call me. Um, I just need to run something by you. Okay, thanks. Bye. You're probably wondering how I got here right now. And well, it's a long story that we don't have time for. Because you see, after working at Area 52 for this long, you're bound to run into trouble. Or stranger yet, trouble seems to find you. Agent Ramsey, if this letter has reached you, it's because they know about our research and are on their way to the storage unit now. With Bob's help, we've managed to prepare the experiments for you so that by the time you receive this, you might be able to continue our work in extracting the 115 and somehow integrate it into the craft's engine. We've added fail-safes to prevent agents from discovering our work so it won't be easy to decipher, but I believe you're the right person to figure it out. Use this key to get into the warehouse. I've also hidden a cassette under my old desk. Watch it in case you need to refresh your memory. Best of luck, your pal at Area 52, John. secret military base near Groom Lake. We had no idea the interview would still be of interest 30 years later. I'm known for working at a classified base known as S-4 out in the Nevada desert. They had uh, one of the reactors out of the crafts, which was an antimatter reactor. Uh, I was given a demonstration on how it worked. Uh, of course, there were other obstacles that were very severe. They identified themselves as FBI. And the whole thing. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. Chris, I need you to solve this UFO puzzle. gentlemen, this has been over a year in the making. Labsterium has sent us the most epic puzzle. If you guys aren't familiar with the story of Bob Lazar, allegedly worked at a secret air base next to Area 51 called S-4, where he was hired to reverse engineer an alien craft. 
His story resonated with millions of people. Jeremy Corbell filmed a documentary about Bob Lazar. What attracted you to Bob Lazar's story and compelled you to make a documentary about it? Yeah, so I, like everybody else, I was curious if Bob Lazar was telling the truth. A local scientist who worked at Groom Lake said to be where top secret weapon systems have been tested over the years. He has asked that his identity be shielded. Exactly what's going on up there. What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. I left a link below that you guys can watch. It is extremely compelling and is one of the most interesting stories that I've heard in years, possibly in my life. So Lab Serum has created an immersive puzzle, a one-time only solve. This thing costs about $40,000, so I wouldn't, if you guys just don't mind hitting the like button, that would be really appreciated. Kind of nervous, we got a big setup here. This is gonna be a big deal. Also, we have two t-shirts that we are launching. Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this video. Shopify is an easy to use all-in-one platform for anyone who wants to start a business or side hustle. And if that is you, I recommend checking out the starter plan to help get your feet off the ground. I personally have been using Shopify for years and have trusted it for each one of my launches, which helps me pay for these videos. It's helped me to sell my products on all major social media platforms and has helped me scale my business by introducing me to the resources I needed. The marketing tools like newsletters, Shopify forms, the analytics, and especially the apps. Finding and downloading the perfect app for your launch among, I don't even know how many apps they have, but there's so many and they're so easy to add. Like recently, we just got the digital download app, which has helped us sell downloadable content on our website for the first time. I'm super thankful that there's a commerce platform out there that puts the brand's vision first, allowing me to be as creatively free as I can possibly be without feeling overwhelmed. So for a free trial, go to shopify.com slash Chris Ramsey or click the link in my description. Like this video, subscribe, let's get into it. So we've gotten this letter from this person who put everything in storage here. Now, before I get to any of this stuff, so I'm not sure what this is and I don't want to tamper with anything. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna open this. I've not seen it, I've not opened it. I don't know what's in here. They've been hiding it from me. Here we go. USAF Federal Property, return to Area 51 Operation Center, Nellis, Nellis Air Force Ranch. The accuracy of these documents already is, uh, is very pleasing to me. It's very canon. Get out of here. Okay, so one of the really important things that Bob Lazar mentioned, so the journalist George Knapp first broke this story, I believe in the 90s, and when he first came out and talked about where he worked, he mentioned a few things. A few things that ended up coming true decades later. One was the use of element 115, which at the time did not exist. There are elements with higher atomic numbers which are stable, even though they don't occur naturally on Earth, and we can synthesize them in particle accelerators. These are the elements in the 114, 115 range, which don't appear on a periodic chart. But 115 is what Bob said was the fuel source. The power source is a reactor which uses this element 115 as its fuel. Two. This is a bone density scanner. He said it was more accurate than fingerprints and it was what they used to get into the bases. And decades later, they actually found a picture of one of these to corroborate his story. The interesting thing is when you walk into the facility or even to leave, they have a, a hand reader. I was told that it has to do something where it measures the, the bright light measures the bones in your finger. They're unique to each person. And it sounds like something out of a TV show, but it, it that's exactly the way it is. When I showed Bob that photo, it was literally the first time that he had seen it, a photo of it, since you know he had actually put his hand in it. I never thought I'd see one of these again. 
<laughs> but I tried to explain this to people so many times and they either didn't believe me or say, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. And there it is. There it is. And this is just so cool. So I guess we scan. Oh. No access. I don't have I don't have access. All right. So over here, we don't have access to this. What do we have here? We've got rubber gloves. Not a good sign. Radioactive material. Is this transactinide? Highly flammable. Do not smoke. Keep out. Keep out of reach of children. There's a liquid in here. Corrosive. Oh my gosh. We got a lockbox, screwdriver, prop return to area 51 operations are Nellis. And so some type of strong box here. Weird piping, weird little, I don't even know what this is. Got a letter, multiple letters, great. May 8th, 1987, you managed to get it out of Area 51. That's insane. I'm sure that together we will prove the whole world that they exist, you are not alone. A friend of mine who also works at Dreamland in the fuel section told me that he managed to obtain some material that should be very useful to you. I will have him send you the package, Major Jesse Marshall. I'm guessing that's what's going to be useful. Just more things. Okay, hold on. Let's get this box out of here. Oh my God. Bob Lazar's ID badge. At S4. It's got some type of cipher on the back as well, or some type of design. How cool is that? And a picture of a UFO. 21st of February, 1979. Might be a clue. Hold on, before we get to this, we got this here. Oh! This is uh, his original sketch, Bob Lazar's original sketch that he drew. It's depicting the field of gravity around the craft caused by the engine here. Area S4 for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, unidentified flying object. So we got S4, a map of S4, what it looks like. And a letter here, June 12th, 1991. I changed my mind about you. I believe you. I am sending you the material that he transmitted to me. I will come to see you as soon as possible to help you in your research. I have secured the material in a portable safe. The code is in the envelope. The code is in the envelope. Desert Blast, the Woodstock Pyrotechnics. Desert Blast is an invitation only event. And the exact date and location of, D, of DB uh, is kept secret until a few weeks prior to the event to avoid a deluge of spectators. Interested parties may fill out the application form and submit it for approval June 10th, 1986. Jeffrey, I've received your letter. I do recall running into you at the Area 51 cafeteria. However, please know that I can't afford to break into government fingerprint readers 
uh, nor do I wish to do so, okay? This might actually help us get in there. I've gotten in too much trouble with my disclosures. Uh, without George Knapp, I would already be in one of my Uncle Sam's secret prisons. I owe you my freedom to being put in the spotlight. I doubt you've been able to get any material out of Area 51. I tried, but it is impossible. I will not come to see you or to see what you have spoken about. If this is yet another attempt to damage my reputation, I will not fall for it. The USAF, United States Air Force, will not silence me in this way and blame me for stealing top secret material. Please leave me alone, Robert Scott Lazar. This is from Bob Lazar. They said the code is in the envelope. This is the envelope here. 1986, this is it four digits? Negative. Okay, we still have this as well. And we got all this radioactive material. This is intense. I'm actually kind of terrified right now. Classified. This is a hanger and some type of uh, design on the hanger. Oh my goodness, what is this? This looks alien. Right, something goes in there. This is this, right? I think it's time we check this out. I'm putting my gloves on for this. <laughs> I'm not taking any chances. Moscovium 115, this is element 115. There's a serial number here, 37C879, classified, extremely secret, level three radioactive. I don't know if I wanna to touch this. I mean, at this point, I'm gonna die of radiation poisoning anyways. Smells foul. Hold on a second. What is this? Experiment, experimental agglomeration process by chemical solicitation. And it's got a little screen on it. Oh, another clue, an email from Jeffrey Lorenzen to Albert Cummings, 1998. Dear sir, I've received your request. I know that our material is experimental and that there is no written instruction manual for the moment. Our technicians have, however, shown your staff all the manipulations and precautions to be taken to obtain element 115 since we have created this material for your needs. I find it difficult to understand the information you are missing. You have to connect the machine, take the fuel out of its protections, place the non-agglomerated fuel in the agglomeration tank, then place the regent in sufficient quantity via the plug without making the agglomeration bath overflow then manage the power and exposure time settings, which allows you to obtain 115 agglomerated at the bottom of the basket. You will have to dry it before integrating it in the compartment provided for this purpose. You will then need to connect the four overpressure tubes and the 115 stability element should activate. From what you tell me, you seem to have forgotten all our recommendations. Try not to irradiate yourself like your predecessor. Oh man, we will not bear the responsibility of your failures twice. Let's see, So this is, this is the instruction to 
I guess, extract 115. I guess this is, we gotta put the 115 in here. And then we gotta add the liquid. How do I know how much liquid? Do we just put it in? This is the liquid here. Can we get a shot of this? Okay, I don't want to overflow it. This is intense. I'm this is actually pretty intense. It's bubbling. I'm just going to press start. Hundred and seventy six seconds. Oh, my God. All right, that's going to take a little while. Let's let that sit for now. And we'll get back to it in a second. All right. So now that we have that, what are we looking for here? We're looking for the code to this lockbox, which he said was in the envelope. I'm guessing that was the envelope with all of these things in it. So maybe it's this, 1979. What did we try last time, 1986? No. I've secured the material in a portable safe. The code is in the envelope. This was all in the envelope. How do I know what the code is? It's a majestic pass too, which is uh, for those of you in the know. We're looking for a four digit number here somewhere. 20038. Oh, no. 6722. It's right there, written 6722 is badge number. <gasps> okay. We have a cell phone. With it, we have a cable. The picture here, has Yorkshire got a flying saucer? Mystery object found on Scarborough Moors as unusual hieroglyphics, okay. These might all be clues. We got some type of thread. Some type of red thread. Got screws here. Another picture of a flying disc. For Joint Chiefs of Staff, declassified in full authority. Chief Records, P.F. Carter Jr., Vice Admiral, U.S. Director. That is, that looks a lot like the UFO Bob Lazar described, the sports model. Oh, and there seems to be some writing here, like almost like alien writing. You've got a signal, symbol here, symbol here, symbol here. I see three of them. Yeah. Okay, that might come in handy. Oh. Check this out. Yes! Camera, archives, hack. camera do? Oh, well, it's just a camera. Oh wait, maybe it's, maybe there's some, oh! Oh my God. Look at this. There's a symbol that appears. So that's a clue. This is so sick. So we've got one symbol here. I'm not sure what that symbol means, but it is there. Okay. So that's interesting. 
archives where the archives have Bob interview. What is an actual interview of Bob Lazar? Hi, I'm Bob Lazar. During late 1988 and early 89, I worked on the propulsion systems of extraterrestrial vehicles for the United States government. The hardware and technology I was exposed to should be placed in the proper hands of the scientific community, and it is the right of every person on Earth to know that there is physical evidence which proves that there is life elsewhere, and that at least one form of that life has been here. How long is this video? I don't know if I should listen to this whole thing. Is this, How long is this? Area S4 is located approximately 15 miles south of the infamous Area 51 installation at Groom Lake. When I went to work, I was flown from McCarran Airport in Las Vegas to Area 51. It might be good information for a lot of you out there who don't know Bob's story, but I encourage you to go watch the documentary instead. Pause this, go watch that, come back. What else is left on the archives here? UFO evidence. Oh, the famous Tic Tac videos. That's so sick. Also a design of our t-shirt. All right, so archives, check. Now we go to hack, no device found. Maybe this is to unlock this. Okay, we also have these things. These go together? No. Oh, we have those little bolts. These connect somehow. Oh, they probably connect on this thing. Is this done? Oh. Oh my God. Let me get my glove on. Get ready. Moscovium. There it is. In its pure form. That goes there. Okay, so these look like they might go here, and this almost looks like, ah, this might look like it shows me how to connect them. Well, this is interesting. How do I know which one goes where though? All right, let's just try to figure this out real quick. Can the camera get a good load of this? Yeah, all right. So this, maybe there's only one way that these fit, right? Uh, yes. That looks right. That also looks right. And then this one. So this one first, this is the lowest one. Oh, this is more complicated than I thought. More complicated than I gave it credit for. And then what does this one look like? Now we just have to, uh, but the thing is, does it go in first? That's the, uh, that's the question, right? Is it there, is it there? No, so close. That one definitely goes there, but I, I think I might have to like pass it through. That's good. That's good. Good. Finally. We did it. How wild is that? That's a cool puzzle. I've never solved anything like that. It might even say it's out of this world. We'll cut that. All right. Um, I'm gonna screw these in, I guess. I got these uh, screws here. Do you have a screwdriver? What do you guys think of the puzzle so far? Leave a comment. Also might be a good time to tell you I did start a new YouTube channel. I'll left the link below. I can't wait to see what's in that. <laughs> this has all been so cool so far. Solid. The Moscovium is contained. Now what? <laughs> no device found. Oh.
I don't know if I'm supposed to take this apart, but they did give me a screwdriver. So to hell with it. We gotta go before they find us anyways. It's the right size. If they didn't want me to unscrew it, they should have put different screws in it, right? Am I right? Oh, there's a small port in there. It's gonna be hard for you to see, but uh, it looks like, oh, it looks like this. Analyzing device, device found, hand scanner. Place your hand on the device to gather data. Hand detected gathering data to create fake ID. Enter name. My name? Name registered, implementing data into scanner. Oh my God, look at this thing go. Look at that. This is, this is insane. Data successfully implemented. Device now recognizes user. Oh, did you see that? This whole thing just budged. like this video. You ready? Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the sports model. This is Bob Lazar's, the UFO that he, the craft that he worked on. It's got lights on it right now. This is absolutely beautiful. Wow, I cannot believe what I'm looking at right now. That is insane. Oh my God. Oh God, All right, we got more things to work with here. Let's bring this over there. We got a picture of Neil Armstrong here, okay. Nice. February 18th, 1985, I've received your letter. I know that you know that I also know, I know what you're thinking. It seems impossible to me. We know that they will arrest you before you can do anything. They probably know that we know that they know that we know. It's impossible that they don't. As a show of good faith and to prove to you that I have connections and that I know, I am sending you this picture of AE. It's not AE. Which proves that he also knows and which proves that they have known for many years. Like me, do you, do you also think that the M project that enables us to win the war came from you know who, MJM? Majestic. Okay. My God, this is highly classified. Look at this picture. Declassified in full. It's a picture of a UFO here. Not sure what that means. Nice. Pins. Got it. Uh, briefcase. Another letter, a telegram, a piece of paper, whatever this is. Okay, we need more room. Okay. Looks like part of a blueprint, some type of craft maybe, or a room. Maybe lines up with that somehow. We got a telegram, Western Union telegram. 
November 24th, 1993, things are moving in high places. They know, they are cleaning up. It seems that the first lab experiment has gone wrong. The subject has alluded to the government. They are arresting any question, and questioning everyone who may have seen or known anything about Area 51. I fear for my life. Get your affairs in order. We must protect our discoveries. Another picture. Two pictures. These also have, they look like they also have little messages on them. There's a graph there. That's so cool. All right, let's get, we got the pictures, let's get the pictures together. We'll need these in a second, I'm sure. Oh yeah, and this thing. Oh. It's a black light, you think? No, it's a regular light. Okay, we've got three digit combinations here. Why else would they send me a picture frame? Well, maybe not. I guess it is just a picture frame after all. It does seem to have like a black light element to it. What's that? Oh, document folder over here. Oh my gosh. What the hell is this? It's the blueprint of the craft. All right, time to set this up. And a one. Can you guys see that over there? We got all sorts of names here. Disc craze continues. This is a this is a clipping from Roswell. Astronauts land. Neil Armstrong. We got Bob Lazar up here, inspired by the by an astronaut. He told me he was recruited by a governor, Robert Lazar, 1977. Barbara Lazar, uh, Woodland Hills, California. Third man to power his bike with a jet engine. It looks like it might attach to the craft itself, but we might be missing another piece. We were given these ropes before, and if anything, I've seen enough conspiracy theory videos and movies to know that these have to be hooked onto something. Now there's these alien symbols, and these alien symbols probably mean something. And I've seen these alien symbols before. One of them with the phone, which was on this. Alien symbols found. So that gives us a word. Or maybe I have to follow the symbols. What's funny is these, uh, these images are all taped, but they all have tiny puncture holes. Can you see this? Look at this little puncture hole. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pin them into those holes. John Glenn, these are astronauts here. Robert Gates, not sure who that is. William Studeman, Lincoln Fowler, Jesse Marshall. So now that we have those in there, we gotta somehow find a way to connect these and make sense of them. Are there names here? Carter? No. Well, we do have Neil Armstrong. We do have Neil Armstrong, so that's good. We have Bob Lazar. 
We have Bob Lazar, we have Neil Armstrong. Inspired, oh, inspired by an astronaut. He told me he was recruited by a governor. What if it's not Neil Armstrong, or what if it's the other astronaut? Was he a governor? I don't think Neil Armstrong was a governor, so. Okay. Do we have any other clues here? Disc craze can. Ah, look at this. Look here. Secretly recruited by NSA in 1982. NSA. One of these guys has to be the director of the NSA. I gotta. I gotta Google something. And he was NSA. Lincoln Four. Fowler, Lincoln Fowler. We'll take this from here and we're moving it over to Lincoln. Looks like it makes an X. 157043. Go look at that. 157043. Right there. That's our code. Or 157043. One, Here we go. 157. Oh. Oh. Oh my God, there is more. Okay, I found a way to light the UFO, but I almost blew it up, it's too dangerous. I hid 30 UFO, I hid 30. There's number 30 here. Oh, that's a black light. There, we're, now we're talking. Whoa. I get it. I hid 30 UFOs, they want me to find, look at this. Camera can pick that up right there. Yeah, you're just gonna have to trust me on that. You see it? Yeah. Well, so there's probably 30 of those hidden around, so we'll find those. There's so, so many things in here. There's a map and a compass. Oh my God. This is insane. I feel insane. I feel like I'm gonna go insane. <gasps> this, what we built. We built this. This goes in there. Whoa! Is this always supposed to be on or only when I press on it? Let me just tighten them up. Oh, that's sick. Oh! Nope. Oh. How cool. All right, time to play with this bad boy. Oh, there's tiny symbols. You see all the symbols in there? Bunch of those alien symbols. All right, well that goes in there for now. I'm guessing we'll have to figure out what those symbols mean in a second. Can we bring this somewhere? I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring this on the table. I don't know what I don't need anymore, but this I probably don't need. All this radioactive goop. Envelope, envelope, envelope. I'll need a, I'll need a place to work as well. So we'll put the UFO on this side here. <laughs> this is the most insane moment of my life. I'm like a kid in a candy store, but instead of a kid, I'm a grown man. Instead of candy, it's aliens. Don't judge me. There's another UFO down here. Can you even see that on camera? If I back up like this, can you see it's like faint down there? 
if there's some type of clue on here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all the UFOs. I'm gonna find all these UFOs. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with them. There's, oh, there's two more on here. Well, there's one more here. We got another one here. And we had a symbol with the phone on that, by the way. Let me go back to that phone. Excuse me? Insane. Just in case. Just in case it decides to take off. Okay, so we're gonna find all these things now. We're gonna make a pile of them. This is like a mini game. I don't know what this is gonna give me once I have all these. And there are symbols, there are like alien-like symbols on these things too. Alien symbols here. So we'll keep this one aside. This one has like little, this one too. Has another little alien symbol. Wait, this is the craft. Oh. This is this here. <gasps> Whoa. Hold on. We've seen this before. Okay. Okay, there's a little bead in here. And I guess I've got a Maneuver it. Oh, well, camera's not gonna be able to see anything here. But I have to go down sometimes and I have to go up sometimes, you see? So I go here. And then this way. All right, well, I'm gonna stop this for now because I don't know where that's supposed to go. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now and go through the contents of the briefcase here. But this will be useful. Oh, what does this say? This is a translation of this. Uh, maybe we can read what it says here. Um, calibration. This says thanks. Thanks what? Thanks. Thanks back. Earth. This this is a whole thing that we're gonna have to probably cipher or decipher. Um, okay, we do have symbols here though. I've seen these symbols before. This one here, there's a, a faint symbol right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but that one means protection. Oh, we got a UFO here, this ancient picture. There's two UFOs here. There's one there and one there. Bunch of letters here again. You've got the word protection here again. Okay, memorandum for the deputy secretary. Okay, so this here is some type of, oh! There's different UFO portraits on these photos and each portrait, I guess you take two of them and they make up a word. What those words give us, I do not yet know, but that is very important to know. Confidential stat project blue book, here we go. More symbols here, more alien symbols. Once again, we've got a solar system of some sort or multiple solar systems. Another UFO stamp, you can see that one, nice and clear. Another one there. And then we have these, which are like overlaid papers that need to, okay, coordinates from NASA. This is all, this is, we're not, we're not even close to being done, ladies and gentlemen. We got more UFOs here, another UFO. But we're gonna we're gonna make sense of all this in a second. Hang in there. For now, we just need to uh, another one there. Okay, Einstein. Oh, look at this. What's Einstein working on, huh? Eh? That's right. I found these photos in NASA archives at the Johnson Space Center in Building Eight. I'm sure you will find them interesting, Gary McKinnon. Wait, Gary McKinnon, isn't that the guy that hacked NASA and found out that there was actually a galactic federation that they were paying for and he's wanted by the government in hideout right now? And so that's a weird one. On a beach and there's this giant like sun eclipsed in the sky. There's another UFO there. 
And we got a map and a compass. We're getting to the bottom of this, folks. We are getting to the bottom of this. There's an X here, a Nevada test site. Okay, obviously. We've got a lot to do. This is where the real game begins.